post tension, uh, the other benefit is that you can do it on the side. The other benefit of the other benefit of uh, this system is that you can do it on the side. You don't need to uh, to uh, to be in the factory or to be uh, the prefabricate. You can make any shape. You can make a slab. You can make an I beam. You can make a box cutter on the side. You do the pre uh, the post tensioning and then you just put it over there or even on the side of the girder. You can do that. Okay, now this is the bonded. Bonded post tension complete is that the bonded? Let me write it here. Bonded post tensioning. In that case, for example, the concrete. For example, if this is a concrete, this is the steel. Or this is the basically the tendon of cable we call it cable wire tendon. Okay, so it is it has a direct contact with the concrete. Direct contact with the just like the normal reinforced bar. This type of uh, post tension is known as bonded post tension concrete. Now the other one is unbonded post tension concrete. The next type is unbonded post tension concrete. If you go to the if you go to the slide number 13. Can you go to the slide number 13? Yes. Unbonded post tension. Unbonded. Sometimes we have both together. For example, what I do, just the same same example. This is steel, uh, sorry, the concrete beam, maybe I shape, maybe rectangular shape. What I do, I put like a plastic pipe. You know plastic pipe? Yes. A full plastic pipe here I'm just telling the plastic pipe there are other materials and then inside the plastic pipe I put this high strength steel wire it is actually not the plastic pipe it is the other type of pipe you can see maybe in the images and there is a deformation on this pipe. There are deformations so that to, to make sure it, it, it this pipe has a good bond. You can see this pipe uh, in the picture in the slide number 13. And then what we do now this pipe has a good bond with the concrete but this pipe, this steel wire or the high strength alloy steel wire which is inside the pipe it does not have any bond with the pipe it is free, it can move freely ok, so what you do you pull this wire the concrete is already hardened, the concrete is hard, you pull this wire Clamp, clamp, and then cut. Or you put a clamp and then pull this wire. So what will happen? There will be a force inside the. Now, with the help of this clamp, this force will be transferred to the concrete beam. Can you see? With the help of these clamps or these objects, this force, once you will pull this, this, these clamps will transfer back this force to the concrete. And again, it is the same thing what you have here. Okay? Can you understand? The difference between the 
In this case, the force is directly transferred from this part to the concrete. But in this case, the force is not transferred from this, the force is transferred from these points. You understand? It is just like applying a force on the concrete. And you know what, sometimes, and, and in fact, most of the time, we use both. How? You know what? Most of the time, we use both. I put a pipe until this point, on both sides, for example, I put a pipe until this point and at that other point the steel vibe remains as it is. I can do that. I can just put this small pipe, this small pipe at the start and at the end and in the center I don't put any pipe. So in this case the wire has a direct contact with the concrete like here. Do you understand? So if you see, if you see the image uh, in the page 13, you can see that there are some parts which has pipe and some parts which don't has pipes. Which way? Mm. Yeah. And you know we need these anchors. This is what I call clamps. These are basically anchors. You need very strong anchors to transfer the forces, you know. Now what are the advantages of post, uh, unbonded post tensioning? Post tensioning which is a form of pre-stressing has several uh, advantages uh, over the reinforcement bar. It's, it, it is like the more or less the similar, it reduces the shrinkage, cracking, it allows slabs <coughs> and other structural members to be thinner, it also allows us to build slabs on soft and expansive soils. Now the, the last slide is a difference between post-tensioning and pre-tensioning. Here in this slide I'm going to tell you what are the differences between post-tensioning and pre-tensioning. Post-tensioning can be performed at a project site. Okay. There is a relatively less loss of pre-stress loss due to the concrete shrinkage at the time of pre-stressing concrete has already been cured. This is what I am coming, so I will explain to you after this that what next? For example, you know with the passage of time with the passage of time, these wires they will have a loss of force. Do you agree with me? Yeah. For example, today you put maybe 1000 kN after 15 years, do you think it will be still 1000 kN? No. Yeah. After 30 years or after like 100 years, what do you think? It will, be, it will relax. The steel will relax. The concrete will shrink. And the bond between these two will reduce. So there are many losses. And there are two main types of losses. Number one are the short term loss and other are the long, long term losses. Even the material itself, it will have some deformation. For example, we are assuming it is a perfect elastic. But maybe if you pull this after a long time, it can have a creep. You know creep? Yes. Creep. I explained this uh, already. Creep by uh, a long time. Yes, after a long time, for example, if you have a wood table, wood chair, so maybe after 30 years, you know, the legs of the chair will become a little bit less deformed, reduced in size. This is on a screen. Even our body has creep. Yeah, after once, I mean, we, we get old, we, we deform. <laughs> so, I mean, our body, our 
like muscles or sometimes our skin it has a creep okay creep so a deformation for a long period of, uh, after a long period of time so so there are some losses there are some losses and for example in case of post tensioning you allow the steel concrete to harden you allow the shrinkage so the shrinkage loss is already gone or reduced but in case of pre-tensioning now there's a shrinkage you know in the pre-tensioning because you you apply the pre-tensioning force before putting the concrete so as a result there is a significant shrinkage loss but in that case that loss has reduced to a certain extent okay so this is what I am going to tell you the next the, there are some losses and the corrosion of steel is less as compared to the pre-tensioning okay in the in case of post-tensioning there is some flexibility in this design the free stressing tendons can be configured to almost any shape as per the tendons requirement or you can make them bonded or unbonded you can also do that on, in, in other case I don't agree with that well the post tensioning they are more prone to the anchorage failure as compressive forces are transferred at the beam ends this is what I am saying if this anchor fails you know this anchor this clamp it fails or it, it, it for example this connection between this wire and this clamp it fails so what will happen the force is gone okay or if this anchor slightly settle inside the beam it goes inside the beam you understand so again there is a reduction anchorage loss we call it anchorage loss so there are more anchorage losses in case of post tensioning compared to the pre tensioning now the next is pre tensioning we cannot do on the side but we can do in the factory there is a great loss due to shrinkage the, the second part is a great loss due to shrinkage the concrete and steel tendons are in direct contact this is I already explained to you so any moisture that slips through crack in the concrete will cause corrosion in the steel now in this case if for example in this case or even in this case there is a crack so the moisture can go up to the tendon and it can cause corrosion uh, well, in, in the for example, in case of pre-tensioning, you know, in case of pre-tensioning, the wire and the concrete they are in direct contact. So the wire is transferring to the concrete the forces directly. So even these anchors even fail, it's not a big deal. You understand? Because the wire itself is in contact with the concrete. So this is all about the losses. So there are uh, short term losses and there are long term losses and we design our we design our pre-stress member for those losses. For example, we consider those losses in the beginning. In the next class I will solve one problem. We will design maybe uh, one beam with the pre-stress, you know. I will use the formulas directly. I don't have the time to explain you all the uh, background of the formulas because it, it takes maybe like uh, one month to explain you the full concept. You mean I mean the inside mechanics as I did in reinforced concrete design. When I taught the reinforced concrete design, I explained you. I spent maybe like two or three weeks on that how uh, there's a compression block, there's a tension, and how the equations are made. M is equal to B into um, a into the y to d minus a over 2. I'm not going to explain you all these equations, but in the next class we will directly use all these equations in the problem, direct application. Okay? Any question? No question? You want to get rid of me? No. Let me close this one.